everyone, this is Kamiko of Wild Flourish, and welcome to a, another episode in our Sage Village series, giving you a sneak peek into our Waldorf-inspired homeschool with some seasonal festive crafts. In another video, I showed our March homeschool haul, where we picked up some of these wooden bendy dolls from Target in the dollar spot section. And so I've been giving them some makeovers using some acrylic paints, felts, uh, felt sheets, and then wool batting to do some needle felting on them. Uh, so last night we made a little leprechaun, and originally he looked just like this wooden fireman, so again we just uh, used the acrylic paint to paint his body green and use the wool sheets to make his vest and his jacket and the brim of his hat. And then I did some needle felting to make his actual top of his hat and the hair for his beard and head. So this was a lot of fun to make and today I wanted to, is St. Patrick's Day, so I wanted to give our little leprechaun a companion of St. Patrick. So it's a little bit of a different look I looked online for different interpretations of his clothing but basically I'm gonna start off with this wooden doll and I think I'm gonna give him some white for his uh, arms and legs and then green for his cap and body and then we're going to use some felt sheets to make a cap and cape since the original body paint is red, so that's fairly outstanding and the white isn't covering it uh, quite, I might have to wait for this to dry and then do another coat. And also I colored one of the gloves white, but then I changed my mind as, once I was doing it and decided I want to make it so he has uh, green gloves instead. So I'll wait for this to dry and then I'll paint that that green color instead of white. It takes about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, for the acrylic paint to dry, to be to be dry to the touch, uh, for me to continue working with it. So we'll wait 20 minutes and then I'll continue painting the gloves and the top of his cap. Okay, so actually I decided to go ahead and finish painting now because I didn't want to have to have two wait times for the paint to dry, first waiting for the white, and then I'd have to do the green and wait another 20 to 30 minutes. So I went ahead and painted the gloves green now, and of course since the one glove that I had already painted white was still wet, the colors began to mix a bit, but I decided to just embrace that uh, lighter coloring of the green and just once it was mixing on my brush to go ahead and carry it over onto the other arm so that way they would be essentially the same color and paler uh, shade of this green. So you might find in your projects that the same thing applies, that if you decide to paint over a certain area and the colors mix, maybe you can just embrace that and carry it over to another side of your project. So now I still have the white and green on my paintbrush, so I'm going to have still that matching color as I come up here to paint the top of the head. And I've seen a few pictures where he had more of a, a cap that just covered the, the top of his head, much like the fireman's hat is fitting flush with his the roundness of the head now. And then others had more of a traditional uh, spiked cap or Catholic cap that you see uh, protruding up towards the sky. So I might use felt on top to make the higher cap or I might just keep it flush like this and use the painting. So we'll see as his outfit and gar garments uh, unfold to see which is a better suit and complement to his, once his cape is assembled. And 
And also there's a few areas where my lines weren't quite as precise. So I've got a bit of paint spreading onto his boots and head. So this is the time while the paint is still somewhat wet to go ahead and correct that. You can just take a, a towel. If it's a little dried on, you can dampen the towel first and then just kind of wipe off those areas. Uh, some of it is gonna be obscured once I put on the, the felt cape and the needle felting for his beard and stuff, so I'm not too concerned, but uh, just a note that we all make mistakes, so um, while the paint is drying, you can still make those corrections. And so now I'm going to set this aside and let him dry for a bit. They, these particular wooden dolls do stand up, which is handy. I don't have a specific uh, stand to help hold them, and I painted all around, so there's not really any surface that's ideal to set down so that the paint won't spread, but uh, hopefully he's, he'll be sturdy enough on his feet. So I'm gonna set that aside, and then I'm going to move on towards making the cape. So hopefully by the time I'm done with that, the paint will be dry and I'll be ready to adhere them together. Meanwhile, I have this other wooden fireman that was identical to the other one that I also picked up. So I'm going to use this one to measure the clothing so that way I can make sure that they'll be an exact fit. So I've got this piece of white felt. I also debated about using some wool batting and just needle felting it to make his gown, but it's gonna be fairly time consuming and it's gonna be uh, thick, I think, that it's gonna make it too wide. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the felt sheet instead. And then I'll use the wool batting for his cape on top. So since the cape is gonna cover his neck and shoulder region, I'm going to measure the white for the gown, starting underneath his arm, and then bringing it fully around and overlapping just a bit. So I'll, using a pencil, I'll make my mark of how long I want it, how wide I want it to be. And then also making a mark of just above his feet. Okay. And then I'm going to use the corner of another piece of felt just so I can draw that rectangle. Actually, <laughs> that looks really angled. Let's see. I'm the type of person who uh, doesn't measure for recipes when I'm cooking. I just kind of eyeball and wing it. So of course the finished product ends up a bit more quirky, but for time's sake, I'm not too concerned. Okay, and then uh, depending on which side is your good piece of felt, you can erase the markings or just turn them inside out. And then again, part of this is going to be obstructed by the cape anyways. So I'm not going to glue this on just yet. It's actually still a little bit long.
And I think once, it's, once I'm actually gluing it on, I'm going to do it at a bit of an angle. So right underneath the arms, I'm going to pull it as taut as possible so they'll be more overlapping from one strip to the other. But then I'm going to bring it down at just a slight angle in the back so that way the points will meet at the bottom of the gown. And that's just gonna make it a bit more cone shaped and wide so it'll give the, uh, the doll a bit more movability <laughs> with their limbs so it lends itself better to play and won't have as much of a Morticia <laughs> effect or mermaiding effect. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this teal partially because I have more of it and it's a bit more, this one's uh, I think an acrylic felt so it's a bit more flexible. This other felt that I have is a bit more sturdy and firm which is great for some projects but in this case I want for it to uh, weave around and bend around the gown a bit more seamlessly. So I think I'm gonna have, go ahead and use this one. And then again, so measuring out, I'm gonna overlap the white felt on top of the blue. Oh, this is actually polyester fiber, but from post-consumer recycled plastic bottles. Okay, so I'm gonna overlap the felts, and then again, trace, even though I'm not going to use quite as much blue as I am of the white, so they're not gonna overlap exactly. But in the picture I saw, it has a bit of a uh, brickling pattern so it's gonna be a bit higher than where the white reaches what I'll do though is put my ruler over on top and then just skipping every quarter inch I'll do my horizontal line across and then measuring a quarter inch down. And then it's just gonna be on the opposite quarter inches. So there'll be aligning with the windows or gaps of the line above. Okay, yay! So now we have that pattern. I'm gonna line it up over the white. Okay, so now that I have both of the felt sheets cut out. I just use some hot glue to adhere them together, keeping the line markings from the blue felt facing down so they won't be visible on top. And now I'm going to do a bit of accent along this rim just to help secure it and then also help it stand out a little bit more. Um, it's nice if you have a gold felt, I think, or a gold embroidery floss. I think that'd be beautiful. But I just picked a yellow that's going to match some of the additional accents that I'm going to be doing on the gown. Okay, so we just finished making the gown part. Two pieces of felt, cut out the pattern, and then embroidered along the edge, and then a rim right above just to give it a bit more intricate design. So this I'm going to set aside. The paint is now pretty much dry on the doll itself. And I'm still teetering back and forth between using, using him. the felt Let me help you. needle felting on top or doing a sheet. 
So, um, I'm going to try it first with this felt sheet. And I think the easiest way to make the cape shape is just going to do be to make a circle. So, I'm going to trace it. It seems to fit fairly well on top of him. And then I'm actually gonna, let's see. I was thinking of layering two and having him have the yellow interior almost. So, so, so. We just embroidered the top of the hat. I used additional pieces of felt to make the rim. Uh, this was just a rectangle that I wrapped around and then cut to make that point. Did the yellow felt hot glued on to make the rim and the bridge in the middle. And then just folded the top pieces so it stayed open in the bottom, but folded the top pieces and then embroidered along the top. The image I'm referencing has two little jewels uh, along the top of the crown and I tried using some thread to like make a knot there but it's so thick because it has the the glue on both sides and it's two sturdy pieces of felt so what I'm gonna try is I just did two little dollops of the hot glue I'm gonna see if I can just paint the glue to still have that same jeweled effect It was 
one red and then one green. And I'm being careful just to get on the glue. I probably could have made even larger circles or maybe a third one of red. <laughs> 